Hi guys, nice having you here this today. Today we are looking at farm animal husbandry, the revision. You have done this in GSS2, and I want to believe that by the time we are through today, you are going to learn one or two things, much more than what you have learned before now. Objectives. We want to define farm animal husbandry. We want to describe system management, and then we want to discuss management practices in animal husbandry. Now, definition of animal husbandry. Now, is the process of managing and keeping of farm animals for the production of meat, milk, and eggs. Now, the process of managing and keeping. Okay, you manage them and you keep them for the production of meat, milk, egg, and others. Now, let's look at system management. Number one, we have extensive or free range. Here you allow the animals to fend for themselves. You allow them to move from one place to another and how they feed, how, where they live or anything. It's not your business. So it is called free range system. The next one is intensive. Now under this intensive you confine them. You are in charge of their housing. You are in charge of their feeding. You are in charge of their health and other things. Okay. So you confine them it is called intensive system. Now, semi-intensive system is in between the free range and the intensive system. Here, you feed them, you house them, and then when they are done in the morning, you allow them to, to go out for grazing. And so after that, they will come back, or you have to go out to look for them. Now, these are the three system management that we have in farm animal husbandry. Okay, now, management practices. Now, these are the things that you do you know, most especially if you are operating the intensive system. Now, the first one is deworming. Here, you give them the warming drugs. You deworm them from endoparasites like liver fluke, like, like roundworm, and then like hookworm. Okay, dip it. Now, you do this as a result of ectoparasites. Okay, for example, teak, lice, and others. Now, drenching. Drenching is also a, a practice where you, you have to free or you make sure that the animals are free from ectoparasite. Cooling. Now, cooling is the removal of all productive animals or animals with vices or animals that are not doing well. Okay, you remove them completely and you don't return them back. It's not that you are going to isolate them. Uh, when they are done, you bring them back. Cooling is you remove them totally from the flock. Now, we have pictures of some of these management practices. Here you have uh, nose restraining, okay? If you want to perform dredging or you want to perform dipping, here you restrain the animals, okay? You use a nose holder to hold their nose hold so that the, the water from the dip or from the drench will not get into them, okay? So you can see this picture. Yes, the next one. This is dehorning, very, very important. Here you have this to dehorn them so that they will not use the horn to um, injure one another. It's another um, practice that you need to embark on. Now this is tail restraining, very, very important, most especially if you are going to carry out artificial insemination. Now what is artificial insemination? Now this is where you put the spermatozoa into the female animal. And so you have to restrain the tail for you to be able to perform this operation very well or perfectly. Now, the next one is castration. Now, here you have the castrator. We have, this is called the bodysaw, okay? Now, bodysaw spencer. Now, we have two ways in which you can castrate your animals. You can use your bodysaw and then you can use your sharp razor blade to do that. Now, this is majorly used for animals with dangling, reproductive organ majorly the cattle, okay? And so it's an important operation that you need to perform or practice that you need to do for your farm animals to make them to be dozer. What do I mean by that? Not to be aggressive, to be friendly, and then to make them to increase in size and weight so that they can be useful for you on your farm. Now, this is another way you can restrain them if you want to dip them or if you want to drench them. Now. This also is very, very important if you want to administer and, you know, vaccine to them. You need to restrain their fore and their hind legs. You can see all this. That's another practice that you need to do 
to make the animals to uh, perfect. All right, thank you for paying attention. In your Google class, you have more explanation on this, and I want to believe that you have gained one or two things, and I want to believe that you will do better, or you do your tasks also better in your Google class. Thank you for paying attention. Have a great day. Thank you.